After having entry-level MacBook Pros or just normal MacBooks pretty much since I was 17, I recently took the plunge and picked up a MacBook Pro 16 with a little bit more grunt to it. Now, I managed to get this from Amazon as a return unit, so it's from Amazon's warehouse and it came in pretty good condition. I actually made a video on that, so I'll link that up here if you'd like to see it. And despite all of this hype and amazing stuff coming out for the new MacBooks from Apple with the M1 chips inside, I've actually been really happy with how this one has been performing. Spec-wise, this is the 16-inch MacBook Pro with an i9 8-core processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a terabyte of storage, and the four gigabyte Radeon graphics card. Another big change is I'm no longer a teacher. I'm no longer teaching anyone anything. I could probably make a video on all the reasons why, so if that's something you'd like to see, let me know but I'm now a freelance content creator across the board. So I'm making videos here on YouTube. I'm also making videos for clients and I'm also dabbling in quite a lot of graphic design stuff too. And this Mac was bought so I could do all of that on the move when that hopefully becomes a thing again soon. Anyway, I will turn myself into a little circle and I will show you what's on my MacBook Pro for 2020. I've recently updated my Mac to OS X Big Sur, which is why everything looks a little bit different, but you are getting that improved control center and the notifications over here on the right. I must admit, I've never really used these that much. I guess this will be quite useful in the future, but the notification shade has never been one for me. I've always find it kind of weird on a computer. The wallpaper is from the iPad Air series. I just really like that. So if you like that as well, I'll link it in the description below so you can grab it. I think it just looks really nice on here. Otherwise, at the top before we go into any apps, I do have a few things up here. This first one is uh, called Magnet. And basically this lets me snap a page to anywhere on the screen. It's really useful. And because I use Windows, I'm a Windows user, you know, quite a lot as well, pretty much 50-50. I'm so used to how Windows snaps around, so I got Magnet for that. It's a paid app, but I really, really like it. And it just it's just great if I've got more than a couple of things on the go, I can just snap them from one side to the other like that, super easy. I know Mac does that anyway, but I've never really enjoyed its implementation of it. So I use Magnet for that. That's the main widget I use all the time, but I'll talk about the other ones later. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that I don't hide my dock, and I know that's gonna annoy a lot of people, but I don't like it when it's hidden because I often find if I've got something open and I go to the bottom of the page to click something down here, then I'll usually pull the dock up and then I have to wait for the dock to go away. I know some people have it over to the left or to the right, or they just hide it completely and, and use search to type in what they want, but that's not for me. I've always been used to just having it here, so it just sticks there. That's just how I do things. Anyway, moving on, Finder, you don't need me to explain that. That is our file browser. Launchpad seemed to show up in here since I've upgraded to Big Sur. Um, I use it very occasionally, um, but it's good if you don't have that an app in your dock down here, you can just find it through there, which is nice. Um, use that occasionally. Google Chrome is still my internet browser of choice and I know it shouldn't be. And I really do want to try moving to Safari because I know it's just so much better for Mac battery life. It's more optimized, it's probably faster. It probably doesn't chew up the battery as much as Chrome likes to. But I've just been a Chrome user for so long. I've got it on my PC, I've got it on my phone, I've got it everywhere, especially when I'm on Android phone, I use Chrome all the time. So for me, Chrome just makes more sense, but I. I would like to upgrade to Safari at some point. I'm sure I will get there eventually. Messages is for iMessage. I'm using an iPhone at the moment so I can send messages through there nice and easily. And I also have the Apple Notes here as well. I really like Apple Notes. I recently made a video on the iPad Air and how I want to move over to something which is a bit more universal because I use Windows so much. I haven't quite got there yet. I am gonna try out OneNote, I think, of all the apps or, or Notion, but I need some time to actually sit and do that. But otherwise, I use Apple Notes for pretty much everything else. Really, really useful. I, I use the Apple Pencil quite a lot to handwrite notes. I feel like I remember things better if I physically write them rather than and type them and um, that's what I use. I, I use it a lot in all my bike review planning and all the things that I like and don't like and things I need to do. So Apple Notes, nice and useful. Oh, this is something I did forget to say as well. I have one hot corner set up. So in macOS, you can set a corner to set up. I have the bottom right one 
which just splits the windows and I can just flick between them really quickly. So I use that a lot. Moving on from there, I have Grids and Grids is fantastic. If you're like me and you like browsing Instagram on the web or using you know, some sort of computer way of doing it rather than checking your phone, then Grids is a really nice way of doing it. It's a full blown app as well. So you can literally post on here and do all those sorts of things. It's actually emulating an Android phone. So you can like, post, comment, all those sorts of things. Uh, go into DMs and all that sort of stuff too. I think the only thing you can't do is stories. Um, I'm kind of okay with that because you usually use a phone for that, but I've posted some things on the Byte Review one from here completely. So I think these last two were the ones I posted through here and I used grids for that. Really, really like it. It's a nice interface. You can resize it and, and do whatever you like with it, but it's nice and minimal too. I usually have that open and just kind of update it every now and then, which is nice. So Grids is great and it's definitely worth checking out. And I'm really excited to tell you that I got access to Grids through today's video sponsor, Setapp. Setapp is a subscription service for your Mac that gives you access to over 200 incredible apps that range from creative stuff to developer tools, to Mac hacks, to even personal finance apps. Setapp really does have something for everyone. One of the best things about Setapp is the amount of paid apps that are included within the $9.99 a month fee. Some of these apps, including Clean My Mac X, Grids, Gemini, and iStat Menus, are all separate paid for experiences on their own, which collectively would easily cost you more than a membership to Setapp. On top of that, the actual app for Setapp is really nicely designed and encourages you to try new things with recommendations and new arrivals. Apps are laid out by category and it's easy to navigate to find something new. I learned about Setapp quite a while ago and I've been umming and ahhing about signing up for quite a long time. So when they reached out, I pretty much broke their arm off. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video and to make it possible. And if you'd like to give Setapp a go, check the link in the description, which will give you seven days for free. If you're running a Mac, I think this is well worth it. Next to Grids, I have an app called Cap2, which is also from Setapp. So thank you for that. It, this is a screen recorder. So basically very similar to QuickTime where you can record your screen. This one does that as well, but I'm using this one because you can set a frame rate. Now I haven't found that in QuickTime, so maybe I've missed it, but that's really, really useful because if I record in QuickTime my screen and I put in my video next to it, it always acts up and it's always been a nightmare. It's made things glitch and stuff before. And this Cap2 one has been pretty perfect for that because I can record in the same frame rate that this video is filming in right now. So that's really useful. Love using that to capture my screen. So moving on from there, I've got the App Store. You don't need me to explain that. That's where you get all your Mac updates from. The same with system preferences, nothing much to say in there. Uh, it's just where you change things around for your Mac. Next to system preferences, I have Spotify. I've been a Spotify user for such a long time that even the idea of switching to something like Apple Music just doesn't make sense. All of my stuff's in here and I'm on a family plan as well, so it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Spotify has been really good actually and in terms of apps and things like that across all systems and phones, I've always really liked it. I think it's great. I wish the Android app was as good as the iOS one because it's really not quite as good. You can't swipe to add stuff, which is annoying, but I've been happy with it regardless. I listen to things like music and a lot of podcasts on here too. And I will shout out my podcast here. If you enjoy listening to me talk about technology and things like that, then you can check me out talking rubbish on interesting things said by interesting people where me and my friend Ben talk rubbish. It's also worth checking out the Waste of Time podcast too. Uh, my friend Sam and Randy run that and it's a really nice video game podcast where they just talk about games and stuff like that. So yeah, that's Spotify. Use that for pretty much all of my listening needs. Moving over to the right hand side of the dock, I have all of the creative apps that I use for all of my content creation stuff. So basically I work in the Adobe Creative Cloud and it's a one-stop shop for everything. It is a monthly subscription thing, so it costs quite a lot depending on how you wanna use your money, but I find it's just the, the best place to work in and so many clients and people use it. It just makes my life easier to run on those things. So for all of my video editing stuff, I use Premiere Pro. You're probably wondering if I'm on a Mac, why on earth would I use Premiere Pro over Final Cut? The answer to that is so simple. I also work a lot on a PC and on Windows, so I need something that runs on both, and Premiere Pro does that. I also think Premiere Pro is really great. I know there's things like DaVinci Resolve uh, or, and Final Cut, as we said, but 
Premiere Pro does everything for me and I really like how you can edit the colors in it. I know DaVinci Resolve is supposed to be even better for that, but I don't really want to spend time relearning something because I already know how to do it on Premiere. It just doesn't make sense. So Premiere Pro for all video editing stuff. I use Photoshop for more heavier photo edits and what I've got in here at the moment is for something, a classic use case is for video thumbnails. I'll use Photoshop to make pretty much every single thumbnail you see on my channel. Let me give you a, a very brief show of how that might look. So if I have an original image here, this is like what I've taken out of camera, maybe a little bit of editing. Um, I would then build things up in layers to make the thumbnail. So these are just some ideas I was kind of playing around with, but it turned out to be having this love behind it just seemed to work best. And uh, there's lots of different ways you can do that because um, it's a thumbnail, you don't have to do the best job, but you can see around the thumbnail, I haven't been fantastic with it, but when you zoom right out to thumbnail, you know, you can barely tell. So Photoshop's what I use for complicated photo edits. If I'm making thumbnails, if I'm removing someone from a background, or if I have to change colors in really specific ways, I'll use Photoshop. Always been a big fan of it, used it since I was in college, so just know it really well. Lightroom is next to that, my favorite app of pretty much of all time. It's just a fantastic photo editor. Now I'm using the mobile version. I've actually moved over to it completely unless I have a really massive client shoot and then I'll use the old version of it or the legacy version, sorry, of, of Lightroom Classic, which is a lot more, uh, a lot of people prefer that and I can see why. But I really, really like Lightroom Mobile. Everything's backed up to the cloud. I can check it wherever I am if that's on my iPhone on a tablet or on my computer, and I don't have to worry about taking an external hard drive with me anywhere. Pretty much every thumbnail, everything you see from me on Instagram is all edited in here. You can kind of see how these these things come together. All the Kuroku stuff is done in here. All the uh, smaller client shoots is done in here and all those sorts of things. And it's just a, a great way I've found of keeping all my photos with me at all times and making sure I can always get the same look regardless of where I am. So I really like Adobe Lightroom CC. I think it's fantastic. If you haven't given it a shot, you really should, especially if you're on there, it's great. Like I say, I will use the classic version if I have to, if I've got hundreds of thousands of photos, get me on classic, that's fine. But otherwise, no. Adobe Audition is what I use for recording podcasts or recording any sound sort of stuff. I used to be into music massively. So I used to use Logic or Pro Tools or something like that. But since I'm only recording really simple stuff now, like voice or really subtle little things like knocks and swipes, I don't need anything else. So I just use Audition and it's built into the Adobe Creative Cloud. It's actually quite simple and nice to use and the plugins on it aren't great I found, but they're good enough, so that's fine. So the last of those creative apps is Adobe InDesign. Now I use InDesign a huge amount for clients and for graphic design work, which I mentioned I'm doing quite a lot more of now. And it's just a really fantastic way of laying things out. People use it for leaflet designs and magazine designs and all those sorts of things. But I also use it for bite review stuff. I make these milestones out of it and it's just a really simple way of lining things up you can pretty much make whatever you want that's print based here on InDesign and it's got really good export tools and things like that. Great for making PDFs, great for mocking up ideas and all those sorts of things. And it's just really well designed to keep things snapped into layouts. You can make columns and do all those sorts of things with it. So I love InDesign. It's been really fun learning how to use it a bit more properly. I'd always dabbled with it, but never properly. But now that I'm using it on a kind of job basis, I've uh, really enjoyed using it and it's a really great app. Again, if you haven't used it before, if you're more onto the Photoshop side of things, give it a go. It's great for layouts. So that wraps up kind of those creative apps and the ones on the side here are just ones that Mac picks up that you've been using for a while. So that rounds up everything I have in my dock. Everything else I do quite simply. I don't need to have any complex folder systems or anything like that. I still use an external hard drive for a lot of bits and bobs, but I do have a terabyte on here now, which is fantastic. So that means I can keep all of my uh, byte review assets. So all of my dust and grain and LUTs and all those sorts of things I can keep on here and I can also edit entire projects on here which is nice especially because I never used to be able to do that on my older 13 inch MacBook because it was just not powerful enough. Those last few things down here are just I keep a downloads folder just there which is really useful so I can just grab things out of it and the rest of it is just standard Mac stuff. 
So that pretty much rounds up everything I have on my MacBook Pro 16 inch. Like I said, this has been such a fantastic computer so far. I am slightly scared about the Apple M1 stuff, but for now and for me, this is a fantastic machine and it works really, really well. If there's any apps you think I should check out, then let me know. I love finding new apps, whether that's on my phone or on my MacBook, and I love to hear from you guys. So let me know in the comments below, that'd be fantastic. If you've enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out massively. And most importantly, it means I can keep making videos like this one. Pop a like too, that'd be massive. And I will see you all in the next one.